Hello and thanks for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. Today I'm going to do a couple celestial bodies here. I wanted to use a certain color scheme that I've always liked, and, which is in these brown tones embellished with some kind of lighter tones in the, the seashell Adirondack Lights range that I always liked and I haven't done in quite a while. Um, right now I'm inking up the nebula with star image. And it's a real, it's my version of a, an actual sky figure. It's this nebula called the uh, Tarantula Nebula. Alright, I just kind of stamped it at an angle, kind of halfway off the page, because I'm going to also use um, Star Birth. images that I saw that was really uh, amazed by some of the uh, early Hubble uh, telescope uh, images that were coming back, deep space images. And I'm using kind of a combination of dark brown and just uh, plain brown from Marvy to ink these up. I, I thought the uh, light brown, well just brown would be a little bit too uh, light so uh, kind of getting a, a little bit of vari more variation with uh, the use of uh, the dark brown in there too and I don't know, I I'm not really afraid of mixing a little bit of uh, ink on the pad <clears throat> alright um, I'm doing this for a Scenic Swap, and I like to use stamps from other companies as well. This stamp right here is this kind of this face uh, looking up in the sky by Leavenworth Jackson. A bunch of uh, really great images, one of my favorite companies out there. With a lot of uh, old engravings, and it's really a nicely curated uh, grouping of designs. I don't see it so much as a person. As when I stamp it down here, I see it more as kind of a representation of, I don't know, kind of more the wonderment, because <laughs> that's what the uh, kind of the uh, the face looks like to me. It looks like someone kind of looking up in wonderment. Uh, this is the cloud cumulus stamp. Um, I'm going to wipe off a little bit of this top portion and go ahead and stamp it. I'm going to stamp it into the imagery up top. Let's get some kind of around that face. just to fill in a little bit of texture. Yeah, some of it stamped into that face, but um, I don't know where I did that was a lot of the second impression of it. And kind of the bottom of this is fairly light, so I'm not really worried about it. Okay, let's start inking up our scene, toning it in. I'm gonna start off with a pale orange, number 16 Marvy. Kinda gonna go for the, uh, the brownish tones. I'm not, I don't know, I could start this off like a peach bellini seashells, but, um, which is the, uh, or Adirondack lights, I should say. Um, uh, but I'm just gonna go straight on with the Marvy. I kind of cleaned off this tip here so it is a little bit more moist and, uh, watery, so this ink will spread around just fine. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, you always say to start off with the Adirondack lights and a thicker ink. Well, before we had all those pads, you know, I was just using all Marvy uh, 
pens, you know, before the raised eye base pads even came out. So you just have to kind of use a lighter touch, you know, um, stamp around in one area a little bit, and just use more um, applications, in other words, tappings with this to transfer the ink over there. Don't try to get it all in one, you know, stroke. It becomes a much more precarious uh, technique that way. And you don't want to get kind of unintentional or unwanted types of marks, you know, in other words, like real harsh, you know, uh, applications with a, any, any given color. Okay, switching up to that same uh, brown that was used on the clouds and imagery. Okay. Kind of framing off the uh, perimeter a little bit. Let's see, getting some on the face. Um, trying to make the um, stars and light, light, uh, I don't know, imagery, the things that I'm leaving light, I want that to seem even lighter by adding something dark around it. You know, in other words, adding contrast. And by adding that contrast, you make things one step darker, and it makes the lighter scene things that remain light one step lighter. Uh, it makes it only seem that way. It's not getting lighter, but visually it just seems that way. Okay. And as far as the toning process, I mean, you know, I haven't been doing that. It's just been a minute or two, but I mean, I'm almost done. Uh, this is a quarter page card again, uh, glossy card stock. Uh, in this case, it's the chrome coat. That's with a K R O M E C O T E. Okay. I want to frame off the top a little bit more by adding in this darker tone. Four corners of the scene of the card. Alright, um, let's add in some, eh, I was going to add in some additional imagery, let's hold off on that right now. This is a Adirondack Lights um, shell pink, when it was called, when these were, pads were called um, seashell colors. The line, the line of colors were called seashell, this used to be called um, uh, seashell pink but now it's the same exact color, but it's called Adirondack Lights Shell Pink. And I'm adding just a tiny hint of uh, pink in there. It doesn't read as pink when you stamp it over the brown. It only reads as pink when you're stamping it over um, some of the area that I left uh, white you know, the white of the paper. Okay, so I think it's giving it a little bit more of a filled in uh, richness. Okay, I'm gonna add in some uh, seashells aqua now. If you notice on 
so many of these videos. Uh, a really pale, light blue um, is one of my, I don't know, most used colors. I like the blues, and uh, you know, I can add blues to green to make greens. I can add blues for as a base for violet tone scenes, and uh, you know the. Adirondack lights when are shadow stamping inks, meaning they're super light, so, you know, when it comes to my usage of them, the lightest colors often get the most, uh, coverage of any other color. You know, the darker colors are kind of on the perimeter, so, so in other words, I really use a lot of this, uh, seashells aqua color. Okay. It's kind of the foundation colors of the scene. Let's add some foreground. Even in a scene like this, it's not kind of a traditional landscape, you know, like a lake or waterfall or something like that. I mean, this figure right here kind of is representing something kind of on something grounded, you know, and then I have the sky, but I can add in some additional imagery. Like this. this is called Bear Branch Large, and again, I see this as kind of, you know, in a scene like this, it's kind of more representational. Um, I don't see this as being kind of a figurative uh, scene, like, like I've taken a snapshot of someone looking up at the stars. First of all, we wouldn't see them like that so close. But I see this branch as kind of more a representation of kind of growth and wonderment and curiosity. And uh, this little twig right here is called a uh, uh, leaf sprig. And I'm going to see if I can kind of match up and add some. growth on there, leaves. And I did the image like this, so you can kind of add in however many, I mean the bare branch can be used by itself, but having this little uh, accompanying leaf sprig can uh, allow you to go in and uh, add this to a foreground, but you can kind of work around things, you know, you don't have to have this set design that would be really huge and, uh, you know, uh, kind of set as far as what it was, you know, one big tree you can kind of add in uh, however much you want of this instead. Okay. All right. And with so many celestial bodies and clouds, I'm going to go in and uh, add a little bit of softness around some of these in the clouds. Uh, hopefully I'll retain some of that white of the page so I can use this kind of this uh, white uh, pigment ink, and let's see, with all these stars, it's really a good opportunity to uh, go in and add some additional stars back into here, and that same texture that was on the images, uh, as far as the star birth, and uh, nebula of a star. And see, I can kind of go in and maybe I would put some of these stars in front of these clouds, even though that's not what it would really look like, of course, but it's almost like a shower of light coming down on that figure's face, you know. And wonderment. Maybe those clouds in the background aren't like billowing clouds, but maybe they're more like a galaxy where there's, you know, like the Milky Way. I don't know if you ever go on a really 
clear night. You know, it almost looks like a, a string of clouds up in the sky. As you're looking through so many stars. Okay. And if you want to, um, let's see here. I want to make some of these stars glow a little bit more. You take a little bit of pigment ink, not too much, and you put a little softness around some of these, and it looks like a kind of more of a glowing star. Okay. And that is that card. Maybe I'll put a little bit more uh, color onto it, but that's basically it. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.